What's the difference in prognosis of multiple sclerosis compared to NMO? Howdy, my name is Aaron Boster. I'm an MS neurologist in Columbus, Ohio. And in this video, I'm gonna be answering that exact question. Now don't turn away because all of that starts right now. Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. In this video, I'm answering Julia's question. What is the prognosis of multiple sclerosis versus NMO spectrum disorder? Grab a pen and paper and let's jump in. First of all, what does prognosis mean? It's a doctor's way of saying, what do we expect to have happen over time with a given condition? Now, multiple sclerosis and NMO spectrum disorder are two cousins. They're both inflammatory conditions, and they both affect parts of the central compartment, the supercomputer that runs the body, the brain, and the superhighway, the spinal cord, and the optic nerves. But they're not the same condition. They don't have the same pathology, and they do not have the same prognosis. Before we talk about the prognosis of each condition, I want to take one step back and talk about how does someone develop worsening? How do they get worse neurologically? Because it's different in the two conditions. We'll start off with multiple sclerosis. In the setting of MS, someone can develop worsening. Their neurological status can get worse from one of two different ways. They can have an MS attack or a relapse and not fully recover. And we made up a nerd term for that called RAW, relapse associated worsening. An example would be they have an optic neuritis and lose vision, and then it comes back, but not all the way. And now they have accrued a degree of disability. A second way that people impacted by MS can get worse is called PIRA, P-I-R-A, progression independent from relapse activity. This is a situation where they're not having an attack, but slowly over time, they lose some neurological functioning. An example would be someone who over su subsequent years develops a worsening limp on their left side. Now, if we switch gears and talk about NMO spectrum disorder, they do not suffer from PIRA. People with NMO do not get worse between attacks, but they do experience raw relapse associated worsening. And again, we could use the exact same example of an optic neuritis in NMO where they lose vision and it doesn't come back all the way. So first let's talk about the raw, which we see in MS, and the raw that we see in NMO. NMO is way worse. I'm speaking in generalities, and that's not to say that every NMO attack is worse and every MS attack is not as bad, but generally speaking, NMO has a much poorer recovery. Particularly early in the disease, someone with multiple sclerosis may suffer an attack like an optic neuritis and fully or near fully recover. Unfortunately, in the setting of NMO, that's not the case. And oftentimes, someone who suffers an optic neuritis may be left completely blind. Very, very serious. The same thing is true when someone with MS has a transverse myelitis. Particularly early in their disease course, they may make a very meaningful recovery from that transverse myelitis. Not the same thing with NMO. Unfortunately, oftentimes an NMO transverse myelitis can leave someone with very serious and permanent deficits. So prognostically, when you think about NMO attacks, it's much, much worse. And if you look at someone with MS for several years and NMO several years, the person with NMO may have accrued much more significant deficits from prior attacks where they didn't recover. Shifting gears and talking about PIRA, progression independent from relapse activity, NMO doesn't have that. So between NMO attacks, we don't see the disease progressing, not the case with MS. In the setting of multiple sclerosis, people can get worse between attacks. And you may have someone with MS who hasn't had an attack in many, many years, and yet they're getting worse slowly over time. If you think about it at 10,000 feet looking down, the population of people with MS may have less neurological disability overall deep into their disease than someone with NMO because the person with NMO didn't recover from attacks at all or only partially. I wanna point out that the key element in both diseases is to be preventative in your thinking, to try to do things to prevent raw in NMO and to prevent raw and pura in MS. 
and that's all about using disease-modifying therapies. If you would like to learn more about disease-modifying therapies in NMO, click the video that's on your screen right now. If you would like to learn about disease-modifying therapies for MS, click the other button on your screen right now.